How's it going, Gray Boys? It is week three of this second season as the head coach at Eastern Michigan. We just beat a ranked army, top 15 in the country. It shot us up 20 spots ourselves. And now, our third game this year, we are playing our third ranked opponent and our first conference opponent uh, in our move to the Big Ten. We do have storylines already building with Minnesota. Uh, we beat the Golden Gophers just a few episodes ago in the Duke's Mayo Bowl to end our season last year. It was a close game, and now we've moved to their conference and we're threatening maybe to take them out again. We are not favored to win this game. Minnesota is the better team all across the board. Uh, but they've only played one game, so not a crazy amount of info. They did destroy Southern Miss 27-3, but we're not necessarily certain how good they really are. How about a look at the top 25? We know that they're in the top 20, which would give us a chance for back-to-back -to -back top 20 wins, which would certainly look great on our resume, considering the team that we lost to is the number two Florida. They just got jumped, actually, by Auburn. Uh, after the Tigers managed to go on the road and upset previous number three Penn State, or maybe not an upset because they were number two, but beat uh, the previous number three in Penn State. So that is a huge out-of-conference matchup for Auburn. And now they'll be looking for Penn State to just win out, uh, make their strength of schedule look a little bit better. Uh, I think there was some uh, FCS teams or some teams that lost FCS teams last week. Michigan State was almost one of them. They barely beat FCS East by four points, but they do hold on. Notre Dame lost to a number three Michigan. So there's another top 10 loss that will eventually benefit us if it continues to keep happening. There's Army losing to us in overtime. Uh, Ole Miss dropped out because Coastal Carolina just beat them actually. And we are not receiving votes yet, but I think if we win this game, we should be right up in there. Now, our preseason, now our early season Heisman watch right now shows the Notre Dame quarterback Anthony Robinson in first with the Virginia running back Stephen Wright, the Texas quarterback Nick Harris, the uh, Auburn quarterback John Jackson, and the Tennessee running back Doug Hunt all following him. Uh, kind of interesting. Nobody is super high overall. 93 overall for Doug Hutt. The uh, redshirt junior is the highest on this list right now. But with a ton of teams only playing one game to this point, uh, that's certainly going to change quite a bit as things move on. I am going to go through and highlight. Uh, I'm curious to know in week two how many FCS teams won. I know there's at least more than this because I see two right away. Uh, FCS Midwest beats Utah State and FCS Northwest beats Western Kentucky. FCS Northwest. Oh my goodness. Somebody call Nitro Drive up. His program is redlining. They get blanked 26 to nothing by FCS Northwest. That is pretty brutal. Here's another interesting one. Duke starts the season 0-2 as they lose to FCS East. And Tulsa, uh, playing the exact same team, survived an overtime scare. FCS Northwest again with a win beats Toledo by a point. Uh, the Midwest team beats New Mexico. East beats Arizona. East also beats Kansas State. This is insane. What a crazy week for the FCS teams is Washington. Kind of true to form, loses to FCS Northwest, uh, 32 to 28. Oh my goodness, it just keeps continuing. The Pirates of FCS Southeast beat Alabama. They want Bama, they got him, and they took him to the woodshed. That is an absolutely absurd amount of FCS upsets. Uh, I think the FCS teams are better than it seems like at least a quarter of the FBS to start this season. <laughs> That is absolutely insane. I've never seen that many upsets in one week. Let's get some recruiting done so that maybe we can get good players in and avoid uh, losing to FCS teams in the future. We have more scholarships to offer right away. Uh, every player, calm down guys, is a yellow bar here. <laughs> so I'm not going to throw away uh, too many opportunities. Christian Jackson, the good defensive end. We don't get. I don't know how many of these guys we can offer. Could it just be the one? There's John Williams. No wins to commit for him. How about Jamal Neal or Mike Hurd? 
Well, that's a shame. We'll get one of these guys one of these days. But otherwise, we just got to keep adding points towards some guys. Ben Patrick, the 79 overall wide receiver, we're going to max out. And that will do it for our points this week. With the guys that we have big leads with, I think I'm just going to send it, give them as many points as we can right now, and just try to get them locked in. Uh, no players ready for visit yet, but I feel like after this week, we'll have a few. So let's get this game underway. 83 overall for the Golden Gophers in Minnesota. They've got an 88 offense and an 80 defense, and that 88 offense really is going to scare me. Oh, what do we do? We've worn a lot of different combos. Let's go silver, white, and green. Uh, I'm just itching to wear a home uniform again, but we're not quite there. For the Golden Golfers, we saw Goldie on the helmet last time, but it was the yellow one. Let's get the maroon one, I think it is. There's the full Goldie, but where is it? The chrome Goldie face. No, the maroon Goldie face. That's the much better option. And then we're going to make them look... Uh, absolutely hideous the rest of the way with the gold jersey and pants and then hopefully that makes it easier for us to win i'm not really sure how that would play out but i'm gonna hope for it anyways uh statistically minnesota's numbers don't mean too much because they played a bad team although they did dominate them but just a, a one game sample size isn't great two games for us isn't great either but we've kind of shown that we're passing the ball much better than running the ball this year, which is a surprise. But I think the more that we get used to uh, all the options that we have on offense, the more we'll be having success running the ball. Defensively, though, uh, stopping the pass better than the run, which is not typical for us. So if that's the way that it's going to go this year, I won't mind it. Meanwhile, Minnesota <laughs> looks amazing on defense and okay on offense, but they ran for 307 yards against Southern Miss in their first game so hopefully we can contain them their top players one of them might be injured but it's a left guard and a quarterback 95 for that left guard is a huge step up so uh, we're gonna have some problems there uh but then you drop down to a, a much more normal 86 overall for that quarterback and then the corner is an, at 85 and he's injured and oh that is brutal one game played where you dominated a g5 team and you lose two players with season-ending injuries, a broken ankle for the wide receiver, and a broken collarbone for the cornerback. That is pretty brutal. All righty, here we are. TCF Bank Stadium in the Twin Cities. Hoping to get it done. Minneapolis skyline in the background there. Tails hasn't failed us yet, and it finally does. We're three of four on the season with coin tosses. We're going to start with the football. Nice calm day here in the early fall. And we'll be hoping to get a good return with Frank Blair. Ron Johnson maybe setting us a good block. He hasn't done that all too much this season. Blair out gets the corner and he's off to the races. Couldn't quite cut it back inside. But look at that, a 49-yard return and we're starting to cross midfield. This might be a little bit aggressive of me, but we're going to start throwing the ball early on this one. Tate, maybe going to need to get outside the pocket. B was wide open. Can we throw Y open? No. Another half second to throw that ball, and I think we have a touchdown on the first play. Could have noticed B and just made it a lot easier, but unfortunately, that's just the way that the cookie crumbles this time out. We're going to try to run it on second down and get some meaningful yards. Durham Finch, no problem. Gets us a first down on his first attempt. I like the running if it's going to work that well. <laughs> Hopefully you guys do too, because we're going to do some more of it. Stan Williams going to get his first carry. He's got blockers in front, but it, everything just collapsed, and so it's just going to be a yard for him. Let's go back to that play action. We'll see if we can catch them off guard with Lane or Fontenot again. Stepping back to throw. Can't get outside the pocket. This is probably picked off. Fontenot! Oh, gosh. <laughs> that ball was way higher up than I expected. All right, so maybe I need to cool the Jets a little bit on passing deep right now. Uh, third and nine. Got to complete this. But it might be four down territory. Tate outside the pocket, waiting over the middle, throwing it. Lane catches it. And Brandon Lane gets us that first down. That was a good accurate throw. Nice job holding on through the contact. So Maurice gets his first completion of the day. That should hopefully settle him into things a little bit. Again, he is still a true freshman, so can get rattled pretty easily good news is we've got uh 
A wise mind in the backfield of Durham Finch Jr. The senior trying to get things done. Hand off up the middle. He's got almost all of it and gives us a third and one. Part of me really wants to throw the ball on this third down, but why should I go away from anything but the running? Stan Williams is going to get the carry, but he shows some strength in its first and 10 at the 11-yard line. That was just good, strong running against a defense that's probably coming into this game incredibly confident. We'll see if it pays off for him. Just having to scramble here, Maurice. Can he get positive yards? No. Oh, well, he got a yard as he fell out of bounds. We'll take it. That was one of those plays where I just didn't really feel confident in Maurice throwing the ball on the run. We're going to bring Zach Wilson, the tight end, in motion on the jet sweep. The spin move. Oh, no. Call an ambulance because that man's ankles are shattered. Unfortunately, we didn't get a whole lot out of the play, but boy, was it still high white worthy. Uh, and now it's third and seven. So this is going to be pretty tough over the middle. Catching it, Zach Wilson. He deserves the touchdown after the spin move. And he muscles his way in. The eight-yard touchdown reception gives us a seven-point lead midway through this first quarter. Ooh, that's a huge upset. Syracuse beats Penn State. So Penn State starts 0-2. Uh, that's pretty rough after starting the season at number three in the nation. All right, what can we do on defense? Jones booting this one away, getting it into the end zone, which is a rarity for us. You love to see it. And Royal, a huge hit, just destroyed McMillan on the return. I have not seen that much devastation in a while as this Minnesota offense will come out and go to work. We'll expect them to do quite a bit of running. It's that left guard that we're going to be worried about. They step back to throw on first down. Coverage actually decent, but over the middle it breaks down. And it is a first down for them. 15 yards on the play. That was some rare, decent coverage for my user there. We just couldn't get to the quarterback in time. Fully expecting this to go to the running back, but it's a play action. They step back. That corner route is open. Can we get there, London? Oh, so close. Unfortunately, it's a perfectly placed pass as Minnesota comes out in a hurry up and they're looking to really do some damage here. See if they will finally hand the ball off again. They ran for 300 yards in that first game, but no stepping back to throw again over the middle. That was just uh, floating up there, but we're getting exposed in the secondary. Curious if they continue to throw or if we'll catch them running it, but we're bringing pressure no matter what. Seeing if we can get in here and disrupt this quarterback's time in the pocket because he's getting, uh, well, too much time to throw. Pressure coming. We maybe forced a mistake. Whitaker, you got to turn the head and make a play on the ball. That was a huge catch from Powers through the contact, goes up and gets it. And now it's first and goal, Minnesota. Well, they're not playing, but there's a strip sack, a fumble, and it's recovered by Logan. Oh, the defense comes up big when it matters. Carter, he's having a huge start to the season. Drills the quarterback, and it's going to be Eastern Michigan ball. Uh-oh, mild concussion for Maurice Tate. That's not good. Albert Johnson in a quarterback. Uh, okay. Well, this is this is news. Let's scramble with Albert. Uh, I'm not going to abandon the quarterback running. But this is not good news for us offensively. Trying to rack my brain for where Maurice would have been hurt. Because we handed it off. No, I guess on that touchdown pass, he must have been rocked as he threw it. So we're going to have to go back to the offense of yesteryear. And just give Durham Finch the ball. And it's working out four carries for 35 yards already. Just need Albert to step up and make some good throws. At crucial moments in this game. If we could take a 14-point lead, that would be massive as well. Stan Williams getting himself another good carry. That's eight yards, and it gives us a second and two. And we're going to bring Wilson in motion. Set the Wilsons next to each other and see if we can have Albert find somebody open through the air. They're bringing a lot of pressure. X, I should have thrown it earlier. I was just waiting for him to get a little bit more clear. I got greedy, and we paid the price with an incompletion. So now it's third and two. We are 100% on the day on converting these, but eventually you're not going to get one. They want to bring some pressure. We're going to try to make them pay. Jeff Fontenot going deep. What can we do? 
to convert this one. I, that was not the right throw. Fontano comes down with it, though. Bad coverage from the DB. And it's another first down. It feels good having an offense that's deciding to make some plays. As we'll see if they can do it again on this run. Durham Finch can't quite pick up the blocks, but man, he's got some speed today. Breaking another tackle as he crosses the 15 on another big run. I'm curious to see if these guys have more in them. Stan Williams on the counter will have a big opportunity. Oh my gosh, that was rough. Defensive end blew that play up. Nick Marshall, a huge tackle for loss. All right, second and 13 at the very least. I wouldn't mind settling for a field goal, but we need points. Trying the play action pass. And A is open. Curtis into the end zone. Albert Johnson, a great ball. And it's an 18-yard touchdown reception by the backup tight end. As we're going to take a 14-0 lead here, nearing the end of the first quarter. How big could that defensive turnover end up being in the grand scheme of things because Minnesota looked like they were about to absolutely obliterate us as their special teams fumbles and Curtis recovers the ball I cannot believe it the Minnesota return man hurdled for some reason in the middle of a giant pile coughs up the football and now it's a chance for a 21 point lead as Albert Johnson takes a big hit but that's going to end the first quarter and that could not have been a better quarter. Two turnovers created in the first six minutes of play. Two beautiful passing touchdowns by two different quarterbacks. The only negative on the day is that Maurice gets knocked out with a concussion. But beyond that, things not looking so bad. If we take a 21-point lead, this might be game over. Going to be tough here. Second and 14, though. Albert Johnson stepping back to pass. Just got to release it over the middle. It's John Wilson catching it, making it more manageable for this third and six. And I've got to do everything in my power not to throw, like, some sort of screen here. So we're set up for a counter. I don't really like it. We'll see. Will Zach Wilson make the difference? Defense doesn't adjust, but now we have an extra man to cover up the blocking. Cutting it North Durham Finch. He's short of the line again. Fourth and inches, but that's what we have Courtney Smith for. It's time for our first fullback dive. Smith had three rushing touchdowns last game on like four carries. Give him another carry here. And oh, ho, ho, they hit him behind the line. But he trucked over the man and the fourth down is converted. All right, they blew up the read option last time we ran it. Let's try it again. Durham Finch is going to get the ball. That's a mistake. Through and through because uh, he just made him pay with another nine-yard carry. He's going to be breaking 100 yards real quick at this pace. Let's see what we can do with Jerome Simmons on this one. We're going to try a little motion screen. Kind of a slip screen. We get the pass off. He's got some blockers, and it's first and goal. That's a good six-yard pickup. On a screenplay that I don't think we've run before. Good to know that I don't have to know how to run the play. The players already do. Durham Finch Jr. Carried a lot already this game. Not going to get the touchdown or maybe... Oh, I thought he was going to get in. They were trying to throw him in. He's already averaging nine yards per carry on a lot of carries. And I was tempted to bring in Courtney Smith, but Durham deserves a chance at the touchdown here. So we'll run it up the middle. That was all too easy. 21 to nothing midway through the second quarter. Minnesota, they got to get their offense on the field because uh, <laughs> our defense is perfectly rested. If we somehow manage to get another stop on defense or heck, even on special teams here, this could be a monumental blowout for the program. We are not going to let the foot off the gas until we get to that point in the fourth quarter where we can just burn the clock out. And I'm curious to see, will they run the ball at all? Another set of downs, more passes for Minnesota, and they continue to pass really well. Our coverage is really getting exposed here. But this quarterback, we know, can fumble the ball, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to try to bring some pressure, and they're just going to bail us out anyways. A little false start, back them up five yards. Well, in no way is that going to deter me from what's coming here. We are going to bring pressure still. They're going to hand it off. Miller was there to get the stop. Oh, but Jorge Martin gets the first down anyways. Minnesota quickly back into the hurry up. 
Probably going to continue to pass. Now this looks like a run. And Logan has his tackle broken. Avery Rawls flying out of nowhere to prevent that from becoming too much. But it's a big pickup. Oh, Logan's got to make that tackle. That would have been absolutely huge. Instead, man goes in motion. It's going to be another handoff out towards the edge. Another tackle almost broken. Jorge Martin starting to get some good carries. And we're going to dial up the pressure. Try and stop these guys from running the football. This one, a counter. We're there to drop it in the backfield. Man, he almost slipped free, but it's a loss of two. That brings up uh, third and six. And we're going to try the cover two, but I'm going to use her Carter and see what we can do there. All the time in the world. Quarterback throws it. and Well, London doesn't get the pick, but it just bounced off his chest. So it's fourth and six. The defense holds. The quarterback should have just scrambled with that he had a very good chance to pick it up and we were in the safe zone knowing that this fake was coming they tried to fake the punt we get the stop and now we have great field position with two and a half minutes all of our timeouts and we start this drive from across the 45 yard line as we'll see the play action pass they're not bringing a whole lot of pressure over the middle tough throw caught by john wilson 20 yards downfield this offense is on cruise control right now. Minnesota unable to slow us down. In no ways am I worried about the clock yet, so we will continue to run the football. And that's going to prove to be a good decision. Oh, no. Durham lost his forward progress by being pushed backwards. That was a five or six yard run turned into two. That makes it a second and eight. Oh, that was so close. Should have just kept it north. I tried to cut it to the edge. Kind of hoping for a block, but it doesn't come to fruition. How about Stan Williams? There was four yellow jerseys in the area and they are all on the ground after he ran through them. I almost have to worry about the clock. We don't want to give Minnesota too much time. We have a minute and 30 left to go 15 yards into the end zone. Obviously easier said than done. Stan Williams stood up at the line. Now I do feel like this would be a great time for a triple option. But we're going to step back looking to throw anyways. Let's have Curtis go a little bit deeper here and see what Johnson can do. Maybe a mistake, but I'm getting outside the pocket. Throwing over the middle. J Touchdown. Brandon Lane. Too easy. Albert Johnson is 6 of 7 through the air now for two touchdowns as we are up 28 to nothing in the first half. Certainly we can't blow this lead. McMillan is back to return again. He's already muffed one of these. Trying the, the kickoff to the edge here, seeing if we can make something weird happen. Although, oh, the blocking looked very dangerous there. We're lucky to keep him inside the 30. So 53 seconds. Minnesota down four touchdowns. You know they have to go for this. What can we do to slow them down in any capacity? Quarterback, plenty of time in the pocket, throws it. Yo, I, I think Frank should have been able to get to that ball. That was a big catch. I just couldn't quite use rim in time, but I thought that we had a chance to make something of that. Minnesota, great field position after just one play. That's not going to help them too much. They get five yards, but get knocked out of bounds. Actually, they might have taken a timeout instead. We might have been helped by the refs there because they have one timeout left in these 44 seconds. I'm not upset if we give up points here. Oh, and that's going to help us out quite a bit. So they got five yards and burned a timeout. But now those five yards are gone, but they don't get the timeout back. Second and 10. Quarterback again stepping back to throw this one. Blair gets burned again by McMillan. That's the return, man. He's going to be the speedster and it's first and goal for the Golden Gophers. I would be lying if I said I'm almost tempted for them to score on this play. Things could happen. Oh, a strip sack would be huge. I'm taking the timeout on second and goal with 34 seconds. We have two timeouts left. If we could create some chaos or if they score, now we have two timeouts in 30 seconds to try and answer back. So I think taking that timeout was the right decision. Now, if this was me, I'm kicking it on side, but they're sending it deep. And I know I'm only supposed to take two uh, or one return a half. I had to try to bring it, and it was bad user from any, me anyways, so that was a waste of four seconds. And now it's time to see what Albert and the offense can do as we will look to march down the field. I'm fine with a couple of yards at a time. Fontenot gets 16 and gets out of bounds, and we only burned four seconds. And we're just going to keep throwing these up. 
This is a chance at a bomb. Brandon Lane, oh, had it in his hands, but he dropped it. That one could have been massive. Unfortunately, doesn't play out the way that we were hoping. They look like they want to bring some pressure, and they will. I'm going to get outside the pocket. B could come open. A could come open. This is a mistake scrambling with Albert. Nine seconds left. Oh, that hurts. With Maurice, we get all those yards and save ourselves like five seconds, but it's time to just heave them deep. We got one or two. I'm just going to give it away quick. Morris, take the timeout. Six seconds. Maybe we run a play here. All I have to hope for is that this one is not intercepted because we have a chance at a nice little Hail Mary. Waiting, heaving it to the end zone. 2-1, and it's picked off, but time has ticked down on the clock. Probably could have gone for a field goal. It would have been a long one. 28-7, to though, as we head into the locker rooms. Minnesota will get the ball to start the third quarter, but it's not looking good for the Golden Gophers. Our defense has done their job creating turnovers and stops. The special teams has been good. And with the exception of, you know, a 30-second drive, the offense has been absolutely phenomenal. I have no complaints. Uh, we wish Maurice well in recovering from the mild concussion, but I think that we've got it. We just have to avoid the complete collapse, and this one should be in the books. How big would it have been? If Brandon Lane caught that first deep pass that we threw. Maybe enough to get us a touchdown. But that's fine. Defense just needs to slow down Mario McMillan, honestly. Gonna start focusing him up on all of these plays on defense. I wouldn't be surprised to see them start running the football a little bit more. Oh, I got toasted on a counter there. Mike Newell goes for 15. And I do feel like we've had the most success on defense when we are uh, blitzing these guys. So that's the play. They're going to run a screen. Flank Blair should have been there for the stop, but instead Royals there to stop him, I guess, anyways. Trips right for the Golden Gophers. We're going to continue to blitz. This looks like a run, trying to stay patient. And Newell hurdles and then tackles himself. So he only gets a yard. See what we can do to slow these guys down on third and ten. Couldn't change formations to get the plays that I really wanted, but that's fine. We put London in the right spot. It's fourth and three, and they might have to go for this, but it could be a stop for the defense. The punt team is out, but again, we are in the safe zone. They've tried faking it once, and we won't be fooled on the second attempt if they go for it. They will punt it away. It's returnable by Frank Blair. Should have taken the fair catch. <laughs> I hit the button. It was just a little bit too late. As Frank got popped on that. And I said I wanted to run this triple option earlier in the game. We're going to go for it here to start off the third quarter. Trying, getting the pitch out to Stan Williams. And it's worked phenomenally. Nine yards on the first play of offense for the offense in the second half. Somewhere that makes sense. That last drive kind of hurt Albert's passing stats. But he's still... Passing really well. In fact, he's on fire. Second and one. Stepping back. Looking to throw. Oh, no. That's picked. No. Wilson comes down with it. I didn't think I would be able to use him in time. But we do get the catch in the first down. And it's going to give us a first and 10 to work with. Finally across the 25. As we will hand this one off the up the middle to Jerome Simmons. Starting to not be able to speak in complete sentences. But he gets six yards anyways. Feel like Jerome has been in on quite a few plays so far in this game, but that was just his first carry of the day. And oh no, oh no! I felt the pressure coming. I panicked through it. I got lucky. We are not going to get many opportunities to make mistakes like that. So hopefully that's the one and only. We're going with a toss to Stan Williams on third and four. We got a long ways to run to get to the edge. He's got a couple of blocks, not enough, but he gets the corner anyways. And it's a first down across the 40. That was just quick running from Stan Williams. I think I would also just call that a bad angle from the defender. You got to force Stan to cut back inside where your help defense is coming from, but they don't do that. And we stay alive and manage to throw it to Kyle Wilson for a measly four yards. If you guys are enjoying the other domination that somehow this team is showing, please feel free to like the video. 
And we can hand it off to Jerome. Cutting it back. He had Albert as a blocker, but just, just couldn't quite get away from that defender from the back. That was almost a legendary cutback. Just didn't quite work out as we will step back to throw him. Kind of looking for Fontenot. Maybe we just throw it over the middle. Give it to John Wilson. It's fourth and one, but this is four down territory through and through as we're at midfield. And would it be a fourth and one or a fourth and inches if we didn't bring out Courtney Smith? They should know exactly what's coming. It's a fullback dive, but they've done nothing to stop it. And the drive will stay alive as we are trying to just keep the gas pedal down. Looks like they want to bring some pressure, so I'm curious if we can get a pass off soon enough. Stepping back to throw. No, no pressure over the middle. We have Fontenot wide open. They played those linebackers way too far up, and thankfully they weren't able to get that ridiculous vertical to intercept it. But we've been given a gift to get inside the 25. We'll just continue to run the ball. Robinson. What is that fourth string running back? Pat Robinson? He's got a carry in three yards. A touchdown on this drive. And I don't think there's enough that Minnesota could possibly do with the remaining time in the game. This one over the middle. We'll give it to Curtis. Oh my gosh. You cannot let Curtis almost score on that one. The defenders for Minnesota are so bad today. Let's bring out Courtney Smith. Fullback dive. First and in goal inches away. And that's a touchdown. Yeah. Pfft. Yeah, they got to bring all the pressure up the middle that they can. It does not work out. And it's 35-7. to seven As Jones can kick this one away. 1-11 left in the third quarter. What can the defense do to really put this one away? Force them to make a cut and we keep them inside the 20. So the special teams continues to do well. And I probably should be bringing pressure here, but I'm not going to. First and 10. They're going to step back to throw. Almost guaranteed over the middle. Good catch from McMillan, but he only gets five yards. For our defense, I'm totally fine with only giving up five yards on a play. Can we get Whitaker up in position? We're bringing Miller on the blitz. On this second and five, I can see a handoff. Their counters have been strong. Letting a lot of clock burn off. Miller! That's another strip sack! Come on! No! How did we not pick that up? Oh, no, the defense had it, but they just couldn't get their mitts on it. That is brutal. Tried to go for the scoop and score instead of just diving on the football. Well, at the very least, it is third and 18. Really tempted to bring that pressure, but we just can't. We'll back everybody off. We got a long ways to defend, and we got Carter getting in there, hitting the quarterback early in the pass. Bobbled around by the receiver, and it's dropped, so it's fourth and 18. And they're punting from their own end zone, so we're going to make them keep everybody back. No gunners here. We're going to go with the pump block return just to see if we can manage to cause some problems for them. Oh, my gosh. That was way too close. Did, did we almost block that? How about Blair on the punt return? Just a couple of guys to beat as long as there's no penalties and the offense is going to take over with incredible field position as this third quarter comes to a close. It's looking like it'll be 42-7 to seven in a real hurry. Uh, and we're just going to burn the clock for the entire fourth quarter. Don't give Minnesota a chance to come back in this game because we have been absolutely dominant. But first, I got to take a look. Did we almost block this punt? Oh, it's not going to be able to... Okay, well, I guess I'm just going to have to look at it in post. So can we just run this up the middle and cause some problems? Jerome Simmons? That was just good defense from Minnesota. I don't advise this, but if you do want to spoil it for yourself, you could just check to see how long is left in the video to know if we somehow managed to screw this up. Giving it back to Jerome Simmons. Oh my gosh. It's naughty. Oh, wow. We are playing against the Pee Wee football team. 42 to 7. At the beginning of the fourth quarter, Minnesota getting shellacked. The first time that we played this team, we had to win it, what, with a walk-off field goal? And that was just a few weeks ago, realistically. But now Minnesota doesn't look like they want to play football anymore. Now, I will say, this game, we're not at risk of dunking ourselves in Mayo, but the Mayo goal on that, uh, on that Duke's Mayo video... That is open-ended. There is no time limit on that. So whenever that video hits 2,000 likes, we will do it, even if it's two years from now. 
It would also be a monumentally liked video for me. We're trying to bring pressure. A little zone blitz. They pick it up well. Plenty of time to throw, and it's a diving catch for Ron Hurd as Ron Johnson was coming over to hit him. Seems like some of our blitzes don't work, and I guess trying to blitz on the left side of the line where they have that left guard is a mistake. But on the other side, we can get Carter in there and terrify Howard Bryant. I have no reason to do anything but user this defensive end because he is feasting at the moment. Second and 10 for Minnesota. Again, Burns is man, and it's almost intercepted. I don't know who that was. Number 96 was trying to get there. That was Anderson, the defensive tackle, almost getting a pick. Third and 10, can we get this stop? Expecting them to throw it. Quarterback all the time in the world. Oh, great throw to Powers. Great throw, just barely beat the zone. Felt like we had a chance to make some disruptions, but we couldn't do it quick enough. As we're going to try to rush a few guys, not enough pressure. That's wide open. Royal brings down Powers. Henry trying to get his team to double digits on the game. And we need a, a very quick turnover. We know this is four down territory for them. We don't want them to have the opportunity on the play action. It's picked off by Miller. And this is going to be a huge return. Miller running down the sideline across midfield, across the 40, the 30, the 20, the 10. And he's going to score. Tackled into the end zone. A pick six, the third turnover of the day for the defense. A huge pick six, and it's going to be 49 to 7. Minnesota. Oh my goodness. Shut down the program. They can't come back from this. RIP to my neighbors in trying to sleep. It is two in the morning, and I am losing my mind because this is the best we have ever seen this team play, and it just continues. Ah, uh, I said I was going to burn the clock out, but we haven't had the opportunity, and now I want to just keep scoring points. Parsons comes in, and there's another sack on Howard Bryant. I haven't seen a quarterback get bullied this hard in a long time, especially by our defense. Second and 18, they're going to have to step back to throw over the middle. Oh, that's a shame. He's going to get the first down too. Tommy Olsen with some drive. Uh, let's continue to bring some pressure. This one could go terribly wrong. Or we could just force Bryant to throw that one away. He has passed for 274 yards and a touchdown. But he's just getting bullied. Second and 10, trying to bring some pressure. Rushing five, it's not enough. Oh, wow. Two guys wide open. They find the running back in stride. Jorge Martin gets 24 yards. I think some of these plays really just show how big the big plays from our defense have been. They have shut them down every time they get close to scoring. And it's been enough. Almost just absolutely destroyed that quarterback again. Good news is we know they're passing on all of these plays. So we're able to defend that pretty well. Out route wide open. Quarterback taking all the time in the world and he eventually gets sacked. He was looking for the home run. He had a lot of space to just run. Oh, and on top of that, he gets injured. So it's the backup Christiansen in for the play. Three minutes left in the game. How is it that we are only halfway through this fourth quarter? This one, a handoff out towards the edge. The blocking is actually really good. Logan can't get the tackle. Green took a bad angle, and he would have scored. Ryan Brown, the 30-yard carry. It's first and goal. We can't allow that. We're bringing some pressure on this one. Trying to send it all. Thank goodness they moved this man in motion because we were not set up. They're going to step back to throw. Quarterback scrambling. The backup... Well, he knows how to run. Chip Christensen, six-yard touchdown run. Minnesota not going to be kept to single digits in this one. Well, we've had our fun. If we can recover this onside kick, we're just going to call it a day. We field it. No fumbles. Oh, my gosh. He actually got a decent little return there. Good job, Sean Mitchell. I will be curious to see if Minnesota will take their timeouts. But they are down about half a million points. And we're just going to run this one. Give it to Jerome Simmons. Let him pack on some yards. And start to burn this clock out. Let this clock burn down below two minutes. Johnson can hand it off to Jerome who breaks a tackle. And somehow managed to get three yards out of that play. It'll be third and one. And a first down here would seal the deal. Again, giving it to Jerome. Up the middle. The blocking more than good enough. 
Five yards on the carry. And we are going to leave Minneapolis with an absolutely massive win. Come out in the victory formation. We'll see ya. Minnesota has a chance to BM us. Uh, if they want to take their time out. Hopefully that's not the case. Uh, Albert coming in as the backup once again can take a knee. And we'll take one more. Really just to rub it in. As the clock will burn out here. And we can see it hit that triple zeros. And start to celebrate. What a game. Start to finish from both sides of the ball. The, that is by far the best game you have seen these Eagles play. There is no doubt in my mind. Dallas Miller, player of the game. Three tackles for loss. A sack, a forced fumble, and a pick six. Oh my gosh. That, that's NCAA. That nationwide player of the week material. As Albert Johnson does a good job stepping in and getting us a win. He might be one of the best backups in the country. And he's making arguments to be the starter. But I just have to continue to stick with Maurice Tate. Even though he's shown to be a little bit injury prone. At the end of the day though. 49-14. We can walk away now 2-1. With a beautiful win on the road. For our first conference game in the Big Ten. An absolutely dominant performance. We did give up 311 passing yards on the game. Uh, but picked up 195 of our own. We rushed for 172 while holding them just to 37 thanks to all those sacks. And we win the turnover battle 3-1 to one, with our one turnover coming on a Hail Mary at the end of the half. So really it doesn't count in my opinion. Dominated at time of possession. We controlled the clock. We controlled the ball. And we controlled the game from the outset. Uh, Albert, offensive player of the game, 14 of 18 for 175 yards, two touchdowns, uh, and he did have an interception, but again on that Hail Mary, and then five carries for 18 yards, which is really good for Albert, and then again, Dallas Miller, the strong safety, five tackles, three of them for loss, a sack, a forced fumble, an interception, and a touchdown. What a complete performance from our new safety. So glad that we were able to pick him up. We will get Maurice back and we'll just continue to throw him in. Uh, if he keeps getting injured, that's just the way the cookie crumbles, I guess. But for back-to-back -back weeks now, we have beaten a top 20 team. This time, humiliation against Minnesota as we will be able to advance to Boise, our final out-of-conference game uh, of the season and our first home game of the season as well. And I'm curious to see Will we be ranked or at least receiving votes, especially after doing that to a top 20 team? A ton of good recruits ready to visit after that week is good news. We have a conference player of the week, but not a national player of the week, as we are ranked 24th in the country. Uh, a little bit of disrespect from the headline, who's playing who? Obviously, we are a, a somebody if we're ranked, but we have flown up the rankings after losing to... The current number two team in the country. Scrolling through any big losses last week. Penn State, we know, lost to Syracuse, who is just a, ranked a spot behind us. UCF lost to number seven Clemson. They only dropped one spot. Michigan State, after surviving against an FCS team, loses to Miami. They drop a bit. Oklahoma State lost to Georgia. Uh, we're ranked and then dropping out Houston, Minnesota, and Stanford as I did see, where uh, where are our Teal boys? They beat Alabama 27 to 10. So the Crimson Tide in this dynasty are not good. They start the season losing to an FCS team and then losing to their first conference opponent in the Teal boys who are now 14th in the country. Unfortunately, that is going to have to do it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. This was a fun game to play. And it's nice to see some potential from our team because these guys did a phenomenal job on the day. It kind of looks like maybe we could uh, have a place in the Big Ten. I was worried after that week one uh, obliteration that was handed to us by Florida, but we've reeled it back in. We understand the team now and things are starting to click. We'll ask if you enjoyed this video, please to leave a like on it. And subscribe if you want to be notified when new videos are posted after you've done that. Uh, leave a comment. Let me know what you thought about that game. And I want to know now what you think that we could do to Boise State.
after you've done all that, you can head down to the description where you'll find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. There's also links to my Twitter, our community Discord, and the college football revamp mod if you're trying to get it for yourself. But all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the goons. And wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning. And we'll see you later. Adios.